Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Pratik Joshi, and presenting to you an ideal case presentation of non-union of a fracture. Now, the most common fracture with which we get non-union is the tibia, and therefore, what I have decided is we will put this case across as a case of non-union tibia. Before I start, I'd like to thank Medusa in India for the opportunity to collaborate with them, and my YouTube channel is Rapid Revision of Orthopedics by Dr. Pratik Joshi, where we will be putting up these topics as well as some other theoretical topics as well. So so please like, share and subscribe both the channels Medusain as well as Rapid Revision of Orthopedics by Dr. Pratik Joshi. So without any further ado, let us move on to this topic which is the non-union tibia in the form of an ideal case presentation. Now what are the learning objectives for this session? Firstly we have to create an ideal format for a short case. Now if you have seen the previous video which I did in association with Medusain, uh, it is an ideal long case format whereas non-union and such related topics such as chronic osteomyelitis in general are asked as a short case case at undergraduate level and therefore in this session we will try to create a short case format. Moving on also a couple of basic theoretical points will be covered which are frequently asked in such a case. Also we would like to visualize some clinical examination findings. So I have made some clinical examination videos from a patient and we will look into them and I will describe the findings and most importantly we will bring together a streamlined diagnosis consisting of a set of keywords which we can use and get the maximum possible marks in the minimum possible words. Okay, so first and foremost we must start as any short case with either the diagnosis or the positive points in history which are supportive of your diagnosis. So in case of a case of non-union you will have a history of a high energy trauma in the recent or the remote past. So the patient may complain of a road traffic accident or a fall from a height or a uh, say uh, some sort of an assault which has happened a couple of years or a couple of months in the past. Second, there will always be a history of suboptimal treatment such as there could be a conservative management or the patient could have gone to a bone setter or they could have been operated in a conventional orthopedic setup with some sort of complications. Apart from that, if there are some complications involved such as infection or um, the, a further trauma or something like that, the patient will often give a history of multiple surgical procedures. Now, uh, if you will see, I have put a plus or minus sign in front of it because this kind of a history may or may not be there. Moving on, there could be a history of infective signs if we are dealing with a case of infected non-union. So a patient may talk to you in terms of a small sinus or a small hole on the skin which is discharging some pus or uh, we could have the patient himself telling you that uh, the limb seems warm to him or the limb is swollen so on and so forth these are of course history signs and there could be some specific signs so the patient could experience a abnormal mobility at the fracture site second the patient could experience pain at the fracture site when the patient tries to stand or walk on the limb and most importantly there could be pain at the fracture site in the case of an infected non-union. We will get to this point a little later in the history. Now, positive points in examination, the things we have to look for here are, firstly, there is evidence of high energy trauma which has caused a fracture. So we could find an abnormal mobility at the uh, fracture site. We could for, uh, find a deformity where if the fracture has partially united, then the uh, mechanical axis of the limb will not be in the normal anatomical axis. There could be shortening in the tibial or femoral component. We will restrict to the lower limb right now because it's easier in uh, terms of case management and of course, all of these abnormal mobility, deformity and shortening will lead to a specific gait of the patient. Moving on, there would be evidence of suboptimal management. If there is multiple surgical procedures, there could be multiple surgical scars. If the patient has been treated with a cast, then some sort of cast ulcer or cast scar could be present. If the patient has undergone external fixation, then we could see the pin tracks or maybe the scars which the pin tracks have left behind. Moving on, as we said, evidence of multiple surgical procedures such as surgical scars may be present. If they are present, then it is very important to uh, see these scars and to note them down in your physical examination that these kind of scars are present. Mention the length, the breadth, the position of the scar and the health of the scar which means is the scar well epithelialized, well healed or is it fraught with some kind of a complication. Also in examination, we must look for infective signs such as pus discharge, chronic discharging sinus, so on and so forth. Now some specific points in examination. Now so far we have gone into points which may or may not be present in a case of a 
non union now there are some points which are very very specific to non union so let us take them one by one first one is pain on weight bearing so if we make the patient walk if the patient is able to walk the patient will complain of pain on weight bearing in case of pain on weight bearing the patient will try to reduce the stance phase of that particular limb and will try to compensate by putting his weight on the other contralateral limb second pain at rest may or may not be present now this is an important point because as per textbook definition non union is painless but there are some scenarios in which non union can be painful the first one is infection and the second one is interposition of soft tissue or incarceration of neurovascular structures in which case pain at rest may be present however if you are asked in the exam is non union painful or painless an uncomplicated non union is always painless moving on abnormal mobility will be present across the fracture site since the bone is disjointed at the fracture site and abnormal mobility always has to be seen in two perpendicular planes so if the fracture mobility is present in two perpendicular planes that is along the sagittal plane as well as along the coronal plane then this test is said to be positive there are some exceptions to this for example in case of the lower limb if you have a mal united fibula in the presence of tibia non union it will block the abnormal mobility and therefore the test will be false negative also in case of a pseudo arthrosis if the amount of fibrous tissue across the fracture site is quite a lot or it is associated with overriding in that case you could get a false negative abnormal mobility therefore we need another test and that is called transmitted motion across the fracture site which means if you were to stabilize the joint above and try to rotate the proximal fracture fragment then in case of a normal or a non broken bone the entire limb should move which means that the movement in the proximal part of the bone should be transmitted to the distal part of the bone whereas in case of a non union this will be absent so absence of transmitted motion across the fracture site is a specific sign of non union again this can be blocked or given a false negative if for example the fibula is mal united in the case of uh, tibia fibula fracture or in the case of a slightly more rigid pseudo arthrosis moving on range of motion at the joint above and the joint below must always be checked now let's take a look at some clinical examination videos here we are we have a case of infected non union and we are inspecting the skin around the fracture if you can see the skin is dark it is atrophic there is the presence of a particular sinus around the skin and what we can see is that there are trophic changes in the skin around the sinus this is classical of a chronic infection so this was a chronically infected non union of the tibia and the fibula moving on here we are checking for limb shortening by comparing bony landmarks such as medial malleolus with the contralateral normal limb bony landmarks at the upper end for example the tibia uh, the tibial tuberosity or the knee joint line also are compared and in this case it is also fairly simple for us to find out if the shortening is in the tibial component or in the femoral component moving on here i am palpating the fracture gap so the fracture gap can be palpated as a cleft between two fracture fragments and here we are examining for abnormal mobility across the fracture site in sagittal plane as well as in the coronal plane also local inflammation for calor rubor dolor and functionalism has to be done so i am here i am checking the temperature remember it has to be checked with the dorsum of the hand and with comparison with the contralateral normal limb at the same time now here we are examining the sinus if there is a sinus present it is important to comment on the nature of the sinus which is a healed sinus or a discharging sinus if there is acute inflammation if there is severe pus discharge so on and so forth and last is the range of motion of one joint below and one joint above so here we are asking the patient to flex his knee joint both of them together for comparison with the contralateral normal limb i'd also like to draw your attention to the fact that there is a lot of movement across the fracture site which again confirms our finding of abnormal mobility across the fracture site moving on we make the patient walk and once you make the patient walk what we can see here is 
an antalgic gait where the patient tries to reduce the stance phase of the affected limb since it is causing him pain. For understanding purposes, let us loop the video again. Here we are, the patient is reducing the stance phase to prevent the pain. So, at the end of our case, our final diagnosis should be name, age, sex of the patient followed by important positives in history and examination, include the disability such as the gait and state the diagnosis. So for the purposes of example, my patient, a 40 year old male who presented to me with a history of a high energy road traffic accident one year ago and now a chronic discharging sinus in the upper half of the tibia with abnormal mobility present in two perpendicular planes and loss of transmitted motion across the fracture side with one single discharging sinus inferior to the tibial tuberosity which is discharging intermittently with moderate changes of inflammation around it. The patient uh, is disabled in terms of inability to walk and inability to perform toileting and personal hygiene and therefore my diagnosis would be a case of non-union of fracture shaft of tibia. This is the way the diagnosis has to be stated. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I have deliberately kept it short because even in the exam you need only about 10 minutes to take the case and another 10 minutes to present the case. So please get in touch with me. My contact email will be given in the channel information. You can get in touch with me on Facebook or Instagram and please like, share and subscribe and leave comments for feedback or criticism or anything else that you would like to say. And our channels are Rapid Revision of Orthopedics by Dr. Pratik Zoshi as well as Medusane India. So please subscribe to both the channels and share across your friends if you like the video. Thank you.